Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong and welcome to the third and final in our series of interviews with Dr. Nia Barzilai of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Longevity Lifestyle Studies. In this video, Dr. Barzilai draws on his long experience working in the aging field to reveal some of the ways that we can improve our health span. His data provides some interesting studies on the ideal BMI for longevity and the benefits of exercise with metformin. So um, I'd like to kind of move on to uh, kind of lifestyle, uh, exercise and diet. You talk about some of this in the... Um, so I understand you do kind of intermittent fasting. Uh, so can you, so can you tell us what, what reg regimen you follow and why you chose that one? Yeah, and I think again, it's important for the COVID-19 era where uh, people are staying home. So, um, you know, it's hard to do exercise, which is really a good way to increase immunity and decrease inflammation. And it's hard to, to do diet. And the reason, so, so let me start with the science. You know, we all, we all use caloric restriction, not only to prove that aging can be um, uh, delayed, but, but also it's, all, it's our positive control. If we have a drug, okay, so we'll have an arm of placebo, a drug, and placebo with caloric restriction, right? Those are the, the three groups that we'll use. And we'll see if we have a drug, how it, it's effective compared to caloric restriction. Hmm. And so we do a lot of those studies. And, and those studies on caloric restriction were taken to suggest that you should have less for breakfast, less for lunch, and less for dinner. But that's not what we've done. What we've done is we would come in the morning and give our animals the food for the day. Now they were hungry. So they would eat everything in less than an hour. And then they would be fasting for 23 more hours. So in fact, it's not caloric restriction, it's a caloric restriction and fasting. Mm. And when we take those animals and give them less food, but to eat throughout the day, they are leaner, but they don't live longer. So, so I think for an aging perspective, the fasting is really important. By the way, obesity accelerates aging, okay? So, so when you're lean, you're already winning a lot. But if you really wanna target your aging, you have to have some prolonged fast and people are doing it in many ways. What I'm doing is basically skipping breakfast. And I know there are many people out there that say, no, I cannot skip breakfast. My glucose goes down. It's not right, but they believe in it. And so it's not for everyone. But most people can skip breakfast. So basically, if I, if I ended up dinner at 8 o'clock, which is mm -hmm. what I did last night, right? And I skip breakfast. You see, I'm drinking a coffee, but without sugar or milk. Um, and I drink soda and you know non-sweet drinks but at at noon time i can have whatever i want to have so if you i never dieted in my life but if you would have given me a diet um for three months i could break any day and i would probably but i'm not going to break look i haven't i have now an hour and ten minutes to go <laughs> I'm not going to break for an hour and, hour and, 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 and certainly I'm going to have ever, anything I want for lunch. So this period of fasting seems to be working well. I did lose weight without really wanting to lose weight uh, because I think it, it reprogrammed my hunger center somehow, this fasting. Um, I feel my, my exercise capacity have increased. You know, I'm doing much better than I used to do. And it's just very easy for a lot of people to do that, even if you're at home, because it's that, it's that close to having the meal you want, but you're getting the benefits of the fasting. Now, this is a 16-8 hour, that's how it's mm -hmm. called, 
we don't know why 16. We kind of invented it. We, I'm actually doing studies in my, in, in my um, center. We're doing studies to see the timeline mm -hmm. that is related to the aging. You know, we're, we're taking volunteers, young and old, going for 24 hours and see how much fast is really needed. Uh, uh, but, and there are some people who are doing it very differently. They go for five days fasting, four times a year. <laughs> okay. And they just do your know, major fasting, upregulate everything you have to defend in aging and let it be for a uh, for few months. There, there are many things uh, to do that. I'm doing the thing that makes sense to me and is easy for me. And I bet with your viewers, there are many people who it's not going to be difficult for them. Uh, mm -hmm. There are people who swear by their breakfast. And by the way, there are mothers who say, you're killing our kids. You know, breakfast is so important for them. Uh, so not for kids, but, but from evolution point of view, when we were hunters, we got out in the morning and started chasing the deer, getting it at night and doing a barbecue, okay? We didn't have cakes, we didn't have Kellogg's. Kellogg's, Kellogg's and the importance of a, a breakfast are late event without science, okay? There, there's really no proof that breakfast is an important meal of the day and certainly not compare to a prolonged fasting. Right. Yes. So there was, while we're talking about kind of weight, there was one thing I saw in your book, you recommend a BMI towards the high end of kind of the reference window. So I'd look at, so the reference window is like 18.5 to 25. Um, and I thought like the lower, but above 18.5, the better. Um, but yeah, so as you get older, you recommend slightly a higher BMI, would that be correct? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that when you look at millions and millions of people around the world in many, many studies, the best BMI is a little bit on the edge of overweight for mortality, okay, for mortality. So it's clear that obesity is not good, okay? Mm -hmm. But being lean is not good either uh, because, for example, uh, your fat tissue is really important metabolically. Any immunity, the, your innate immune is a lot of it is in your adipose tissue, your macrophages and your uh, other things. So you need to balance here. Look, with the caloric restriction, we know one thing. If you don't give the animal any food, they'll die in a few days, okay? Mm -hmm. So the question is, how much is good, okay? So when you in human are trying to say what's the best, you should first of all look at where, from an aging perspective, you should look at where the mortality is the lowest. And the mortality is lowest at BMI of 27, okay? So, so you have to know that if, if I came to my university and said, I wanna take people with BMI of 25, normal BMI and caloric restrict them, they would say, well, according to documents, uh, to studies, they're going to have uh, increased mortality <laughs> because that's what the data shows. We're not giving you permission to do that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so this is something to consider. Okay. So one more question on kind of lifestyle. So you talk, so there was a study that showed that exercise doesn't go well so well with metformin, right? There, there was some that in, I guess it inhibits mTOR and so building muscles is, is a little bit harder. Uh, but you seem to view that exercise with metformin is is better. I just wonder if you could talk about that very briefly. Yeah, well, the paper is uh, is in, in review now, but we took the same people. But by the way, th those are elderly, elderly people mm -hmm. that were exercising with or without metformin, and they all improved their muscle, okay? But those without metformin improved their muscle more. The muscle was bigger, okay? Hmm. Interestingly, when they looked at the function of the muscle, it didn't change. It was the same. I, I mean, it changed. It was better in both. Right. So for me, the thinking was, okay, with metformin, you have a smaller muscle, but every gram of muscle works better. Okay. Uh, and so what we did is we took the transcript of those muscles 
And we showed that all the transcripts that are mTOR dependent have been lower because metformin lowers mTOR. And that's good for aging, by the way. <laughs> yes. But also there were 416 transcripts that were changed by metformin. And those transcripts are important for the biology of aging, like autophagy and inflammation and other things. So that in fact, we got a smaller muscle, but that is more suitable for aging. And at the end, it was the muscle did exactly the same thing. So I'm still exercising with metformin <laughs> because yes, there, yeah, yeah, look, if you're young and you want muscle, don't take metformin, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're old and exercising, then, and you don't want to show your muscle, you just want to be healthy, then both of them are probably working well together. In terms of the future of longevity research, could you pick like one thing that you think is like really, that's really exciting that's kind of being re researched now by your lab perhaps or uh, elsewhere that, um, yeah, that, that you think is really going to change the future? Well, I would just point out to the following example. You can take a, a, a sperm of a 70-year-old man and an mm -hmm. egg of a 50-year-old woman, and you can fertilize the egg with the sperm. And you can have an absolutely normal baby. It will start, the stem cells will start to divide, the blastocytes will form. And something really interesting happened. Although we can measure the age of the sperm and the egg on their DNA with epigenetics tool, the baby that's formed starts at zero. Mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we don't accumulate the ages of our fathers <laughs> and mothers. We found a way to do it in this setup. Okay, so now we have to think how to do it for our whole body. How do we uh, clear the scratches of aging, like Sinclair would say, and, 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 get enough, uh, and get enough effect so we have a major change in the way we age? Uh, so I think this is not happening now, but you know, we are over, always overestimating what we can do in two years and under, underestimating what we can do in 10 years. And so we'll be back and see how it goes. But there are experiments like that being done. And so, and my final question. So um, what is the one thing that people could start doing today that would be beneficial for their extended health span? So I, I did give the example of intermittent fasting. So let mm. me just say something about exercise. Mm. Uh, and exercise, is, for me, tops even nutrition. And again, it might be hard to exercise these days, and I'm not suggesting that people who never exercised before are going to jog for five miles, but uh, walking, and, and there's a way to uh, measure your steps by Fitbit or in your own iPhone, but if you can get, and sometimes you have to get out of a crowded apartment in hours that are crazy, you know, maybe five in the morning or 10 at night, but if you walk and get as close to 10,000 steps, it's going to increase your immunity, decrease your inflammation, and increase your body's resiliency to tackle severe disease. So I would say do that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So can you tell people where they can find out more about your work? Yes. My, uh, my book is... Uh, called Age Later. Let me put it on the screen. Uh, yes, please. Although we will definitely have it linked to as well. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you can buy it in Amazon. And it really gives you this idea that it's not snake oils. We are a bunch of scientists, geroscientists, that were working on that. We started with hypotheses. We gathered data. We did studies. We did intervention. And I'm talking not only about that, but about a biotechs. I, I'm a founder of a biotech called Cobar, and you can see the story of Cobar there. 
and uh, and also a little bit about the future because the future is we're going to have other things coming from other direction and i think the future is very bright i think it's the end of time it, it should be the end of time where we get to 60 we started to accumulating diseases after diseases and their treatments and the interaction of the treatments this is not what it needs to be we should target aging and live healthier and age later right yes thank you very much and yeah it's a wonderful book i, I read it um and very interesting i thoroughly recommend it so uh dr Basley, thank you very much for your time and i hope that we do get the chance to talk again thank you all for watching as dr Basley revealed your lifestyle exercise and diet for example really depends on your age and what your aim is. My wife and I are focused on longevity lifestyle habits. I hope that you found the video informative. We would like to extend our thanks to Dr. Barzilai for being so generous with his time and insights with us for this series of interviews. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for notifications of new releases. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.